Hello, everybody. Welcome to Pearls of Wisdom. Today, with Suchada, Navasit, and Katharina. And we have a topic that we actually have talked a couple times before, but I, I want to combine it this time with the, the whole free will and karma thing together. So this is a different perspective to look at. Okay, up yes. to you for the question. Okay, so my, my first question is, uh, we live in a free will zone, but why does it feel I have no free will at all? Yeah, exactly. I think most people have the same feeling because we struggle so much to survive that uh, where the heck is my free will, right? So the first thing I want to say, the free will that we have is how we approach things. And to, to go back again about the zone of free will and how that all happened, we have to be very clear about that. We live in a simulation. Most of you have practiced probably seen the movie Matrix, especially the first one shows it very clear. And you can see the tendency that is going on with this metaverse, with these kids having this um, thing. You know, it's like the same, you know, like just imagine you never take off the mask. You're just being fed and you lift the mask. Because we have, again, when we live in a simulation, in something that was created. That what has created our simulation is not a human being like you and me, right? Otherwise it couldn't have made this um, virtual reality or simulation or whatever. So imagine again, like I, I did, the story that is a very good uh, comparison to understand is like, you know, when we were still on other dimensions, maybe on some stars or whatever, and there was, we had uh, choices to do things. We had got together a group of um, beings, I don't want to say human beings, who said, okay, let's create this reality that we can um, make experience. And if we don't know the past and the future, we make a, a line of time so we can experience in a complete different way, like not in a higher realm when you know everything already. So we thought that is a very, very powerful challenge. And there was a huge group who was working on this program and some of them, they inserted some animals and some others, they inserted some birds and some plants or whatever. It was everybody bring something at the end we have this planet with all the incredible many different kind of varieties of plants and animals or whatever so and then this was created and and of course you know that you can have this going you also need to make certain laws and certain rules otherwise it doesn't work so at one point when this all worked, we decided that we're going to insert part of ourselves into this reality. Now, this would be like I put on the, the, the mask and I go into the metaverse or, uh, and I put myself, a part of myself in there, but not the whole thing. It's like the metaverse, your still, body is still here, but part of your psyche is there. So we have, we have more or less done that. And also then we have made some rules and regulations how that life functions, like how our physical body function, that we have nature, that we have food and so on. Anyway, these rules have been made. And let's say in the first million years or whatever, it was very successful. And the planet thrived and people thrived and it was absolutely gorgeous. And then at some point, somebody came in and saw that, that planet thriving and happy and the people wonderful, whatever. And they thought, gosh, I want to have that too. So, but they didn't have, they couldn't get in. So they hacked the program. You know, that's just a modern explanation, right? So they hack our program and send other beings in. And these beings also... Those who have hacked the programs are not human beings here. We can say they exist in the fourth dimension. We don't see them. But they wanted to, to profit and to have what we have. 
Now, what is very clear in the Matrix movie, you can see like when uh, Morpheus said and brings up the battery, that's all you are. And this is like certain people like the, you know, the Gates and the Schwabs and all this kind of people, you know, they are in fact possessed by beings from this fourth dimension to do their uh, doing because you imagine the fourth dimension, they cannot eat like we eat vegetables and, and whatever. They live from the energy of our emotion. And negative beings, they need negative emotions to feed on, to thrive. So they need to keep us in a low consciousness level that is with fear, that is with anxiety, that is illness, whatever, that we constantly give off that negative energy that they feed on. Now, if you want to uh, move on and if you want to leave, the, the program and again think Tesla think about people like that they, they all said and also um, like uh, what is his name oh, sorry I forgot this is a, a brain surgeon who, who also explains exactly how our brain works that it everything is frequency and energy mm. that I mean we have a physical body that looks like physical that we perceive as physical because of our senses but in fact we are energy mm -hmm. and now you have to uh, lift your energy to a certain amount of frequency that you can leave this matrix and again, remember when I made the consciousness level, we had the eyes. This is the frozen. These are those who are completely used. And when we look at the water, when it boils, it evaporates and the, the, the water is flying. So it's in a way the same for us. This, when we have a high consciousness level, that's when we can leave the matrix and leave this reality, this hacked matrix that was taken over also long, 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 long time ago by negative entities. Now, again, what they are doing, they're keeping our energy low. Now, where is here the free will? The free will has been there, first of all, for those who have been here from the beginning, those who created the matrix and put part of them inside and all the others who came afterwards had the free will to come in here so for example if you go to university and you sign up for law or for art or whatever you have a certain curriculum that you need to follow otherwise you you're not going to make it right now the same is here also once you have decided to come into this universe, university life to learn, you have a certain curriculum that you have chosen. And of course you can drop out. What means drop out? You die. But you mm. can also finish and then use this knowledge that you have learned forward. But now again, we have a real difficult issue here. If this is why we incarnate, now we come to the topic of karma to, to bring that in. If we incarnate all the time, again and again and again, why don't we have the free will to choose another life? What is it about karma? What is it about that what we have to come back here? And every time we are born, we do not remember anything. We have to more or less start at the scratch. Mm -hmm. Now, this is because our program has been hacked. The oh. matrix has been hijacked, we can say. So, oh. yes, absolutely. It does feel as we have no free will. And the only thing what we have, the free will in the moment, is how we approach the situation. Mm -hmm. If you want to take it in a positive or in a negative way. And this is, is again connected with the consciousness level. The higher your consciousness level, the more positive is your approach. The lower your consciousness level, the more negative is your approach. And, and hence, that is more food for the satanic um, beings, that fourth dimension entities. Mm -hmm. 
So, so it means that uh, the reason that we were structured so much, even though we, we even even though we we know that what we want, but we still structure in the life. So the reason that because of the pro, we we were hijacked with the program, right? Yes, our our matrix program or whatever you want to call it was hijacked. But mm -hmm. we are here. We could not just go out because our consciousness level started to fall deeper and deeper and we get more and more and more involved and it cannot pull ourselves out of it because of that low energy. That low energy feeds the other, um, the other party who has hijacked mm -hmm. the world. And, and I mean, when you look out in politics, that's exactly what we see today. We have high-tech mainstream media and everything. So all the information we get is not the pure information from our divine source anymore. So mm -hmm. since we are, all of us in a way, the, the connected directly with the divine, there is only one way out. And this is to reconnect with the divine, to go again, just the line straight up. And all the others, even the great masters who have lived, they have been here they have given us a message but again this message was captured by we can say mainstream and made into a religion with dogmas and beliefs see the belief is not knowing the opposite of belief is doubt belief does mean i don't know i have to believe it mm -hmm. and this is because they cut us off through this hacking from our own divine source that we were connected before now these are all metaphors to, to to help people to understand what's really going on but i think i feel like um the free will and karma is the opposite end and how can it connect Perfect. Because free will is like the free, really, free because will. we create karma with our free will. Uh, what do you mean by create karma with okay. our? Will? I, for example, I have a garden, right? And I'm gonna plant some salad and some beans and then some zucchini, for example, and then they grow. And when I go in my garden and I have zucchini and beans and salad, I might be very angry that I don't have tomatoes. But I didn't plant tomatoes, so I don't have them. So karma is not something that is just something negative. Karma is anything what you kind of seed in your life with your energy. Oh. So out of that, when you put in seed in the in the ground, this is the cause, and then from, from there, it sprouts the plant. And that's, again, you know, you put in maybe one seed and afterwards in the plant, you have a thousand seeds. And that's exactly the same with karma. This is we put in something, we say something, we do something, but this energy is connected with, it, with us like a plant that is growing. And this is so imp imp nearly impossible to ever get rid of karma. And we have also, again, karma functions only on a certain level of consciousness. Once you are beyond, like, for example, when you think about steam and ice again, steam, water, ice, steam does not follow the same rules anymore as ice or water. Like water is liquid, non flows. Ice is, is solid like a rock. Steam is like air. So we have three different ways. So this is the same with karma. Let's, uh, let's put it that way. Karma really works for in the water area. Where mm -hmm. things flow. But the moment it, it starts to evaporate and become steam, it doesn't, it doesn't um, work anymore. Because once we let go of the judgment of good and bad and understand that karma is just about lessons to learn mm -hmm. but again when we are born and we have no idea anymore what we learned maybe thousands of lifetimes already and we have to start at the scratch again every lifetime mm -hmm. there is not much possibility 
to move on. And that was the heck of the matrix, that we don't remember anymore who we are. And that mm -hmm. will go into the second question that we have here. Why do I struggle so much with even knowing what we want? Mm -hmm. Because of that, because it seems that whatever we do, it's like it's not bringing us anywhere. It's like it takes so long time to see the result. Yeah. Or maybe we, we would we would be able to see the result in this life. Yeah, well, but actually we should. See, that was the original that we should, because uh, like, for example, death wasn't ever in the original matrix what it is now. When we have done, um, we can say a lifetime, uh, we have a much higher consciousness level and we just want to leave because we had all the experience in this body, whatever we wanted. And then, then we leave, we rise our consciousness. Let's say again, a, a metaphor, uh, um, a picture like the Tibetan monks uh, like they do it you might have heard about the rainbow body um, it said that if they have 13 years no negative thought they uh, dissolve into the rainbow body but maybe it wouldn't have taken us 13 years because we've been in a positive um, base already we maybe just uh, have to go like in a meditation rise our consciousness and leave and then our karma is dissolved completely. So as you mentioned earlier that this is like the matrix. So it's like we live in an illusion. But it, why we feel so, it's so real? <laughs> yeah, I ask myself too. Especially <laughs> when it hurts, right? Yeah. Uh, because that's the, the, that is the meaning of the matrix we did first to experience a way that we could never experience on a four or five or whatever higher dimension. That we went into a lower dimension to experience matter. But when we came still from a, from a more enlightened consciousness, um, it wasn't painful, it was fun. Only the moment that, that this was hacked, I just use words, no, okay because we need a picture to understand. So the moment that was hacked and it, in the Bible and in other scriptures, it is all written about uh, uh, fallen angels and all these topics. And these are just other words that people explain it at that time. Now, today, when we have computers and metaverse and all that stuff, we can use completely different pictures to explain it, but it's the same story. They were the negative entities that started to seduce the people with a higher consciousness. And because they were in a way in their heart, loving and innocent, they fell for their scheme because they could not even imagine that somebody would be so negative, so violent, so bad to, to hurt somebody, you know, that was totally not in the nature of the people with a higher consciousness so see this is you see how the connection is with the free will and the karma you have free will like again to plant whatever you want and then karma takes in that's what you planted you have to harvest now, one thing is very important to understand also about this hacking. And I had a personal experience or several with that. And I had about, that was about 12 years ago, a friend of mine from Germany came over. And uh, she is uh, also a psychic and she is uh, connected. She has a method developed that you can kind of leave your body and go into other dimensions to figure out things. And the place I was living before, and um, there was a lot of disturbance, energy disturbance. So uh, one day we did uh, said, okay, I was the medium to go and she was the one guiding me. So she said, okay, let's see what happened in this area. So I went and I saw that, especially that place where I live and, there, and around there were some, um, 
what do you call that soldiers you know the, there was there was like a guerrilla war it was not the big army but they were groups and and that they attacked and um i saw how they killed and i saw that there is a gate that leads you to the higher self that leads you to the divine self and i saw those negative entities i saw them in form like shadows shadow beings they put a white gate in front of the really divine gate so you have a gate here and here was the, the gate that opens when the people died and they put the gate in front of it white this white light absolutely white the gate the divine gate was more a golden white light and so the souls that died they had they they were said go to the white light go to the white light so they went in here and here they were trapped into the incarnation cycle mm -hmm. if you go into the divine golden light you are not reincarnating in the same way as like that that hamster wheel you know So it is very important to understand that what happened is even in our death, they have a fake heaven, they have a fake whatever hell and whatever they have, and they seduce the souls that they cannot go back straight to their divine origin, but are stuck in the cycle of reincarnation. And, 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 and how, how can we get off the hamster wheel? This is again, rise your consciousness, connect with the divine within in the moment when you know you, you die or when other people die, when you have a chance to be there and help them, tell them to use that kind of mantra. I ask the highest aspect of the divine self to guide me to, to go to the divine self. Could and that be the divine? Sorry? Could that be a fake divine? There are many fake divine, yeah. And they have names. How can we know if our divine is the real one? or No, if you are connected with your own divine and you don't give your power away to any other gods and goddesses outside, not mm -hmm. even masters. And even masters who have lived and I... I I don't know, maybe you can ask the Christ consciousness, but don't ask Jesus, the person, ask the consciousness of the Christ or the consciousness of the Buddha to help you, but not the person, not the personified aspect. So see, that's what life is about now in the moment. That's why it is so important that we have that connection to our own inner self and stop to worship any other entities outside of my divine connection. Imagine God as the sun. And each of us is, is at the end of the ray of a sun here. And here is a sun ray. And here is a sun ray. We all have the ray goes back straight into the sun. And in this way, we all have the unique and personal connection to the divine. So let's say if in one life, we already know of this wisdom and we already connect to the divine and then we die. Yes. So the next incarnation, why do we have to not remember all the past life? Yeah, but maybe then you do. Oh. Or you don't even come down in such a low frequency anymore. If you really go up to the highest level of consciousness, then you don't need to come back here. You only need to come back here if you are trapped in the wheel of karma, in the cycle, in the, the, the white light or whatever you call it, because our consciousness level is constantly kept low. So you can also see in the past, there were not many people or masters that were enlightened because the masses were kept in fear. There was war, there was famine, there was um, 
real pandemics and people were just busy surviving. They had absolutely no chance to, to, to connect and have time to meditate or connect with the divine. And maybe one person managed it like a monk in Tibet maybe or in the Himalaya somewhere or in the Andes or but the masses had no chance. So that was like, they went on and on and on, fell deeper and deeper and deeper. But see what has happened actually in the last few years is that our consciousness level has been rising slowly, 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 coming out of the state of being frozen. This is why we are not doomed now in the way that we have a cataclysm and the earth is being destroyed. Because the consciousness level is rising. And now it helps through the awakening of people. There is more light. And again, warmth and light. This is connected with enlightenment. Enlightenment just means to be in the light. Mm -hmm. And now we have those teachings. We have those insights. And everybody who wants really to listen and to move on today has a chance mm -hmm. and even if you go through false teachings first that doesn't matter for example we talk many times about that that the new age is hijacked also of course and uh, it's more or less hijacked from eastern traditions going to india you know from that uh, that way that has taken over and when you go further back and look at all the deities there then you see what is going on. This is another worship again. But this is not bringing the divine within you. This is not you connected with the divine within. This is you maybe connected with any divine entity outside of yourself. And again, you give your power away. Mm. You can buy candles and stones and whatever. They will not enlighten you. They might have an energy that helps you in the moment. But the final and last step that you have to make is to reconnect with the divine within. And again, what are they doing? They tell you, oh, you're a sinner. You're not worth it anyway. Mm. And so that's, again, <laughs> keeping you low level. Go to your knees, bow, prostrate yourself of the God, of the goddess, whatever. Don't be, uh, um, you know, when you find that in the light, you don't bow to any other entities anymore. Mm -hmm. Then it's also like you have something like an, a natural intelligence. You know immediately what is good for you and what is not. Like, for example, a person who has a certain degree of enlightenment would never wear a mask because you know that it deprives you of oxygen, that, it, that you breathe in all bacteria, fungus, and whatever is in the air, and it has no way to help you, um, whatever that, you know, we talked about the virus, that cell debris. Um, I, I'm really absolutely puzzled why masses still believe in a virus. Doctors talk about it, but nobody ever, ever has isolated a virus. And the virus is not alive, so how can it procreate? So now you can just see at what is happening. The masses, the stupidity of people, the, how much they fell into obeying blindly without knowing anything for themselves. And the only way to get out is you have to get into knowledge. You have to start to do the research yourself and to, to enlighten yourself step by step by step. And when you reach a certain level, your intuition becomes stronger and stronger. And then comes the moment we talked about of knowingness. You don't need to, to read or to, to discuss anything. When something happened in your life, you just know. And that is that connection. 
So it's like we have to plant the new seed. Like build new new build the new karma. You don't even need to build new karma. When you come into that moment of knowingness, you just do at any moment in time what you know to be right. Mm. And and then it's not like a long-term karma, whatever. You're not detached or attached. It's just there. Like, for example, you know, the way you live. Um, the way you treat others. Like if you if you come from a low consciousness level and you constantly judge, this always comes back to you. But at the point when, when your consciousness is higher, you you let others be I said, okay, um, if they want to do the life like this, okay, it's their choice. You don't try to missionary anymore either. <laughs> uh -huh. mm -hmm. So, 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 uh, one more question about the reality. Is our so called reality real because we will link create it? What, what does it mean? Okay, let's say, yes, we did willingly create the reality in the beginning. Mm -hmm. And first of all, we didn't know that our reality matrix was hacked. Mm -hmm. So we can say, I mean, you can even say from the highest divine purpose that was also intended to give us a complete uh, experience of like really fall into the deepest depth of uh, the third dimension that is even possible because even I mean the third dimension has it's not just one real but we have a higher and the lower so this is the fear you know the consciousness level again the fear base so that we really hit rock bottom to have all the experiences that are possible and so we willingly went into that and we also sacrificed some of us even who knew that we are going to go into the forgetfulness and into the real negative experience. Many of the old souls has, have done that because they know the moment when the light comes back and the energy goes up, they will remember who they are because they know. They've been up there already. They've fallen. They have agreed to fall. And now when the moment we come up, and you can see that, the more you rise in your consciousness level, the more you know, the more inspiration you get, the more suddenly, oh, wow, that you know. And this is why the old souls have gone down with the whole into the deepest energy hell we can say um because they knew exactly they will be able to help to get out and with that time also take a lot of souls with them mm -hmm. so we willingly came and i love there is one book um from uh, solara she wrote all in El Anra, the um, healing of Orion. This is the story from an angel who fell. It's a cosmic story and it's more or less the same. The angel was captured and the wings were taken off and she uh, was put in a, in a hell and, and uh, she was become the, the wife of a spider guy who is uh, in war with the others. And so the whole story of her resurrection, how she went up again, and this is a metaphor again uh, about the story of humanity. We are all in a way, we can say, at one point we went down and at the highest level, we have agreed to that. And in this book, um, her sister or twin sister, whatever, it is always a little bit like, her sister saw the fall and she was weeping a few tears. And then you see again the, the down spiral, how she became mean and how she started to fight and conquer and everything. And then and, and the angel on top watching her weeping. 
you know, kind of, it's more or less like our higher self up there weeping when you see us in so much pain. But this is what is pulling us up again. So that's the only way how we can get off that hamster wheel is first of all, we have to know that when we die, but when you die in a higher consciousness, this this white light trap cannot even hold you back because you know better. But you can you can really help the more you get enlightened, the more you know, the less you get attached to karma. You can also see the less you get attached to material things like you know, fame or, you know, all these things. I, I don't even care about that. And I cannot even imagine why would somebody want to be famous, you know, mm -hmm. and have all that gossip around. So you see that you are moving completely away from the masses and your life values are shifting. Mm -hmm. and, the, and this is the way out. So find your own way how to do it. If you are uh, doing a meditation and then, but just not stand up and I'm out of the meditation now. So take that with you the whole day. Be centered the whole day. Till at one point, your whole life becomes meditation. Or some people, they go walk. Some people like me, I swim. My, my mm -hmm. swim meditation is, is much more important for me. Mm -hmm. and and so everybody has his her own way how to get there but that is also question everything everything and especially if mainstream supports something you can know that it's not true mm -hmm. so whatever like all these things are also new age yoga whatever it is what mainstream supports is not the way up Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So see, uh, hot topic. <laughs> yes. Okay. Do you have any other question? No, no question. No, I think we cover all. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. So hot topic. As I mean, <laughs> this needs some digestion, and that's fine. So right. thank you, everybody, also for listening. Thank you for the questions. And um, if you like the video, please give us a thumbs up and share it. And mm -hmm. we'll see you next week when we make our next video. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.